<laughs> now, yeah. I want you to welcome the host of the Isaiah Factor, Mr. Isaiah Carey. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank, thank, you, thank you for coming, man. How you doing? Good, good. I don't want to slip and fall and sue Dr. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have a great show. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I didn't know it was 50% church. So <laughs> I got some tithing to do. Look, look at look. God. Won't he do it? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah, if, you, if you want to tithe, you know, I, I'll tell you how to spell my name. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good to have you. Glad to be here. And, and thanks for coming up from Texas to be a part. Now, you're, you're part of the Foxhole family. Thank you. So we, uh, and I'm excited about that. Why? To be a part of a new, uh, unique show that's just starting out all over the country, yeah. you can't ask for anything more. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I agree. I, I love Fox Soul. I love it. I love it because the people who work with this network and work with all the shows are people who have integrity and they're gifted. And, and they, just, they just want black people to flourish. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, they and want there's positivity. Oh. Like you, I mean, you're like the male Oprah tonight. I'll you take inspired it. me. You inspired I'll take me. It. Say and it again. A lot of <laughs> the male Oprah. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's interesting about you is, um, is you, you started in broadcasting very young. Yes, very young. Very young. Um, so much so that it almost seems odd, right? Yeah. How old were you when you started? My first appearance on the NBC station in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You hear that voice? <laughs> I want that. <laughs> A couple of shots of gin. And you <laughs> but it started when I was five years old, yeah. and uh, there was a segment on the NBC station called Thought for the Day. Mm. And so uh, I was picked by my principal in my elementary school, and I went down to the NBC station, and I did it. And the next thing I know, I got a call saying, we love this little black kid. Bring him back again. Mm. So I did it two years. It was only supposed to be one time a week once for me. And it's done weekly by other students. So they kept me on for two years, and I did it for two years. Isn't that something? That's amazing. You know, I believe that when you are doing what you're supposed to do, it comes with an ease and a longevity to it. Mm -hmm. And clearly, there's, there, there's no way in the world that you could have done that for two years and this not be what you were born to do, at least in large part. And I realized this is what I wanted to do in the form of journalism when I was in the third grade at South Boulevard Elementary and a reporter came to uh, my uh, third grade class and she talked about her job and her journey and I said, that's what I want to do. That's incredible. Yeah. Third grade. Third grade. And it went further than that. After that appearance uh, the reporter had in my class, I, I went home and told my mom and dad, I said I wanted to be a reporter. And so what they did was they helped me write a letter. People don't write letters anymore. Yeah. We actually right. wrote a letter. We right. had to mail it to the local TV station. And we got a call back saying, bring him down. And so I went down the, for the first visit. Then I went back for the second visit. And I said, can I come back again? And then again, and they said, I'll tell you what, your elementary school is only two blocks from here. Walk here after school every day and serious? have your sister or brother pick you up after the 6 o'clock newscast. And so I was in that newsroom from third grade until I went away to college. Wow. Yeah. wow. That, that's incredible. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's said that your, um, that your gifts will make room for you. Yeah. And, and one, one, of the ways, one of the ways that I've learned in my life that someone is gifted at something is if doors open for you as you do it. Mm -hmm. And if doors ain't opening, you may not be gifted at that. But if you're doing something and doors are opening, you might wanna, you might wanna follow that. And your story just, just reiterates that for me. Now, the remarkable thing about your story is, and I wanna frame it in this way. Okay. Because I think most people think that their big moment will come from some major happening. So most people are waiting for, you know, a huge door to open or a huge opportunity to happen. And you teach us that it's something small, something <laughs> small can happen, and that little thing can change the entire trajectory of your life. Exactly, exactly. Something that I was initially embarrassed of, you know, Even I, I said I've won two Emmy Awards, I've won Broadcast Journalism Awards, and this is what people know me for. But you know what's amazing about it, and we, we have the clip, and I want to play it in a okay. second. But what's amazing about it is that this viral video, right, mm -hmm. that, that everybody's seen, everybody's seen, 
What people don't realize is that there's such wisdom in the video. Yeah, yeah. And the wisdom of the video is, it's never what you think it is mm -hmm. that's going to get you there. Exactly. Right? So, 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 the, the, so the great lesson is always be ready. Right. But when your moment happens. I agree. So we're, we're going to watch the clip and on All the other right. side. Let me just hold my head. No, 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 no. <laughs> Play. Devil is busy. <laughs> Play the clip. Happened on that Thursday here at Augusta High School that led to Chris Wood's death. The f*** is that? I'm dying in this country up town. Flying in my mouth. The f I can't see pilot. And let's get the f out of this country, mother. I can't see me. Okay. Hold a second. <laughs> Every time I watch that video, <laughs> it is so funny to me. It, it, <laughs> let me say this to you. The, the reaction was so honest. Too damn honest. <laughs> <laughs> because, because anybody, I mean, if that happens to anybody, your first reaction is, what the hell just happened? <laughs> now, here's what people don't know, beyond the humor and all of that, is how your life changed because of it. Yes, yes. Walk now, us through that. Initially, like I said, I was totally embarrassed when it got out. It happened back in 1996 in Little Rock, Arkansas. And it was just a blooper. And it had disappeared. And the station moved from one location to another in Arkansas. Well, when they moved, they left a box of tapes outside. One of the tapes had that clip on it. And some guy who plays in a rock alternative band was just walking down the street, uh, uh, picked up the tape in the box, and, and viewed it, and then he put it on YouTube 10 years later. Mm. 10 years later. Wow. And so I, I, I went to station management at Fox in Houston. I said, I got something to tell you. <laughs> it ain't good. And I played it for my general manager, uh, D'Artagnan Babel, who's here tonight. Mm. And he looked at it, and he, just like everyone else, bust out laughing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he says, you have to embrace this, Isaiah. Yes, but yes. I still wasn't ready to do it. Mm. And eventually, maybe a year or two later, I think I was uh, approached by Comedy Central and Taj.0, and I said, okay, I'll do it. And so after that, I embraced it. There's so much in that. <laughs> I think mean, there's so much in that. Because not the least of which is the notion that life took what you thought was the, your most humiliating moment. Exactly. And used it to change your whole life. Yeah. You know, you work a long time to become a well-respected journalist. Right. And to have something like that happen to you and get out publicly, like you said, in my mind, it was humiliating. Right. And then after I saw it brought joy to people, mm. and they weren't laughing at me, but laughing with the video. Yes. And they could relate to the video saying, I would have the same reaction. And the funny part to many of them is, you know, many reporters seem robotic with no opinion. Yes, And yes. so you see this report <laughs> totally lose it. <laughs> yeah, but, but again, that's, that's what you always, you always win being yourself. Mm -hmm. You just can't lose. And, and that's the beauty of that video is that you're so, you're so Isaiah in that moment that you become everybody. <laughs> yeah, you become everybody. You You're be Isaiah. <laughs> You're Isaiah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's interesting because um, now, now just just complete the story and take and tell us um, what the trajectory of your life was after you embraced it. What happened? I started getting calls from different TV shows wanting either me to appear or grant them permission to use a video. Like Blackish, they use it in one of their episodes. Uh, in the Cleveland show, they created a little character, a little black reporter, yes, that, who uh, yeah. had the fly go into his mouth. They did it in a movie. And so it just kept going and going. And, and it still gets new life every uh, month or so. Somebody will post it. And, and I can't believe everyone hadn't seen it already, but there's still people who are discovering it. And, and it, it's amazing to me how when you embrace, when all of us embrace all of who we are, 
all of what we've done, mm -hmm. all of what's happened to us, how, how that transforms our relationship with the rest of our lives. Oh, because no. being ashamed of something, wanting to hide something, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, wa and wanting, wanting people not to see something might have been the thing that kept you in the dark in a small little station in some podunk part of Texas. Country-ass town with blood flying <laughs> <in> your mouth. <laughs> I can't see, pollen, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, it's uh, it's interesting because now you have come uh, to be a part of, you know, uh, Fox Soul and the Fox family. And what's amazing is that you have a Fox a show on Fox Soul called The Isaiah Factor. Uh, tell us, tell us about the show. Isaiah Factor Uncensored. We get uh, to take a look at some of the daily news topics and issues and. Uh, social issues that are going on around the country, and I get to put my own type of spin on it. Mm. If the person is a dumbass, I get to call him a dumbass. <laughs> they allow me to do that at I Fox. like your show already. We have a segment called Crazy Ass Criminals, where we follow criminals who have just gone amok, run amok. And so we, we it would be news raw, essentially. Mm. But we also have entertainers come on, make appearances. We have uh, musicians who come on. And we do uh, community service, like uh, this year I'm doing a toy drive for kids. Uh, each year I do air conditioning drives for senior citizens in really? Houston. You know, Houston's hot as hell. You know, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. ain't like L.A. Y'all got yeah. great weather out here. But I get to do community service as well uh, through the show. It's been on up for about five years now. So you're doing well and doing good, and, and, and it's transforming your life and transforming the lives of the people that you're able to help and bless. Oh, absolutely. And, and I guess what's interesting is, because you've interviewed a bunch of people, yeah. and, and I'm wondering, what, what's the most interesting, uh, who is the most interesting person you've ever interviewed? There are a lot of interesting people I've had an opportunity to interview. I wouldn't say I've met that person yet. That just blew me away. That's that just changed me. That's what I'm looking for. Someone who will have an impact on me after mm. interviewing them. We've interviewed a lot of celebrities, a lot of uh, everyday people, but I just haven't had that interview quite yet. That, that's a very interesting Unless answer. you come on the show in Houston and we can solve that problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, when, I, when I'm in Houston, I'm coming. Can I come? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If I'm in Houston, I'm coming. I'm com what, what, what? And the sweater game is strong on you. <laughs> Don't y'all see the sweater? <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your dream interview? <sighs> Probably Barack Obama. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think I, after the White House, where he can be honest, mm. say what he wants. Right. Know. So the other night, last night actually, I was talking to Tammy Mack. We were upstairs as you know the hosts. We get together and we talk. Fellow Houstonian. Yeah, Tammy Mack. <laughs> she's, she's amazing. She has yeah. a show uh, tonight that comes on at nine, and um, and she said something that stuck with me. She said she had a guest on and. It was a question she had wished she had asked, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we talked about that. And I'm, whenever, whenever I get to talk to people who do what we do, I'm wondering, is it, has there ever been a question that you didn't ask? Now, I don't want to know who it was. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a question that you didn't ask that you wish you had asked? No. Because really? I will ask everything that comes through this head. And what I try to do, like we're doing now, is have a conversation. I don't have a list of questions mm -hmm. written down. Because if you rely on those questions, you're going to miss a gold nugget by just listening. Right. And so anything that I want to ask, nine times out of ten, I will ask unless we run out of time and got to go commercial break. Gotta really? Pay bills. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I, I can't say that. I mean, I did, did, I've had at least two interviews that I know of, I wish I had asked a question that I didn't ask. Well, I get, what I do is I have the questions that I want to ask at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that way they don't get away. Even if it's a tough question, you lay that one out first. And then you go on with the feature part of the interview. But you get the tough questions at the beginning of the interview and everything you're curious about. And I try to think of what the viewer wants to ask and I'll follow up and ask those questions. So, so your, your interviews are long form, they're short interviews? 
anywhere from four to seven minutes. Okay. It depends. Sasha Armstrong, my producer's back there, is like, cut it, cut it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it's anywhere from four to seven minutes, and you have a lot of time to just sit with people. Not like this. I would love this, but, you know. What, what, what's the, like, with, with this show, I have an intention, right? So every show that we do, that the producers work with me on, I, I make sure that the show is in line with what I want to accomplish because God has blessed us with a platform. Absolutely. And we have to use it responsibly. Mm -hmm. So what I want to ask is, is as, as you think about your show, what you do, what's the intention for your show? To inform the people, but also entertain them while I'm informing them. Mm. Mm, that's so great. we kind of call it infotainment. Infotainment. Yeah, mm. but it's information, but we want to give you the vital information of what's going on in your country, what's going on in your community, but also entertain you as well. That's good. That's Don't good. Don't make it boring.